Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Vahi Mehta bringing you another video today on retouching wrinkles. Now the reason I wanted to do a tutorial on this that if you are a portrait or a fashion photographer, you've definitely been there. You've been where the photo looks fantastic, the lighting is on point, the model's pose is perfect, but there's this goddamn wrinkle that you didn't see while you were shooting the photo. And it happens. It happens to the best of us because you're so focused on getting the overall image that you miss out on these small details. And it could be because of the way the model was posing or if the clothes didn't fit the model as they were supposed to and so on. However, you should ideally try to fix them at the shoot itself. However, just in case you didn't, I'm going to show you how we're going to do it. So without wasting any more of your time, let's just jump right into it. So I'm going to show you how we're going to go from this to this. This is your before and after. So the technique that we're going to be using over here is frequency separation. That's exactly the same technique people also use for skin retouching. I have a tutorial on this. I will leave it in the description box below. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two copies of this layer. I'm going to press Ctrl J or Command J. This is your color layer. So this is your low frequency and this is your texture layer, high frequency. And what we're going to do is I'm going to turn off the texture layer. I'm going to come to the color layer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to filter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Now the thing with picking the value for Gaussian Blur, there's no right or wrong value for this. Essentially what you want to do is you want to pick a value where the texture is not visible anymore. So if I'm just going to bump this up, I can still see some very tiny texture. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this on YouTube. That looks good to me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click OK. I'm going to go to the texture layer. I am going to click image apply image and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick my color layer over here I'm going to select subtract what subtract does is it's basically removing the color from the texture I'm going to click OK and this is how it look it'll have like a weird gray look to it and then all you have to do is go here and do linear light at this point if I go the do before and after it should look exactly the same and all you've done is you've split your original photo into frequencies of texture and color. Now comes the big part. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush I'm going to go to mixer brush. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these values on screen in bigger numbers so you can see them in case you're watching this on your phone and essentially what you want to do is you can keep your wet and load uh, values high even your flow high and the reason for that is because you're working on a white cloth you don't really care about the slight uh, color changes and stuff unlike when you're doing frequency separation on skin tones you obviously don't want the reds from the tip of her nose to kind of blend with the shadows that are formed under the nose or next to it so what I'm gonna do is start painting and mixing using the mixer brush can see the texture is quite strong in some parts of the area so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the texture layer I'm going to take the clone stamp tool and what I'm going to select is current layer over here this is super important what it's doing is it's only working on the texture layer now nothing else and that's essentially what you want to do so I'm going to clone stamp only the texture and not the color and you'll see how it works As you can see, I have like more cleaner lines over here. So I'm just going to copy the texture. You don't have to worry about these highlights as they're a part of the color layer. And as you can see, it's already starting to look so much better than it was before. One other thing is that you want to keep some wrinkles on the dress just so that it looks original. And this goes for like all sorts of editing uh, whenever you have some slight imperfections that you would see in 
normal life which happens uh, i think you sell the effect a lot more rather than having a clean polished look which makes it look very photoshopped so yeah just don't go too crazy with it this is your before and after now as you can see one of the side effects of doing this is you've lost the natural creases of the dress which is just basically because of gravity and what you can do is you can create them now to give it a more natural fall so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my adjustment layers I'm gonna select a curve and I'm gonna just bump I'm gonna bump it down first this is for the shadows we'll create I'm gonna press Control I or command I to invert it take my normal brush and I'm just gonna paint in some areas this is too strong so I'm just gonna bump it up a bit back I'm gonna make it a bit darker as you can see this is before and this is after and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another which is just bumping up the exposure a bit and I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna invert and I'm gonna create the creases that were essentially creating the shadows we just created so I'm gonna go here I'm gonna create one over here then I can create one over here and you get the idea as I did with my initial edit this was my after and you can see I went all the way and that's essentially what you want to do make sure you don't go crazy with it and just keep some natural wrinkles so it gives a more realistic look and that's about it that was a quick and short tutorial on how to fix wrinkles in your photographs if you like this video please let me know in the comment section below subscribe to my channel and I shall see you guys next time take care